Hey friends, welcome to what is truly our final art class of the year before the summer. I know some students don't get art class this week because it's a short week, but you guys are all welcome to do it if you want to at any point this summer. You don't have to do it this week if you're busy. But I thought this was a really fun activity that would give you some ideas of how to continue practicing your art throughout wherever you go this summer. Usually when we think of a journal or a diary, we just think of a book with lots and lots of words. But a lot of artists really enjoy journaling and having pictures. And some artists use a lot more pictures than words because it's a little hard to express some things that you're feeling. I'm going to show you a couple of quick videos of some different artists who do this art journaling. Then we are going to be doing some sketches of things that we see today. Hello my loves and welcome back to my channel, or welcome if you're new here. If you've been with me a while you know that I love to document my travels in an illustrated journal and I've also spent the last few months on and off accumulating the souvenirs of everyday life, sticking them in my sketchbook and letting my art be inspired by my experiences. It's been a great practice to challenge me to draw new things, to draw consistently and to have a treasure trove of colourfully tangible memories to look back on, which is why I'm going to be making this even more of a focus for 2018. Since the new year is closing in quickly, I thought I'd share my tips for journaling in your sketchbook while I catch up on some old entries for this year. This particular day I'm working on is one you might have seen briefly at the end of my September vlog. Ozzy took me to a really cool exhibition his aunt was involved in, held in this beautiful building, and on the way there, the sunset was just mind-blowing. It was the kind of evening that I find perfect to capture visually, or even just in writing, because in your memories, when you look back, it almost just seems too good to be true. So I suppose my first tip is to always have your eyes open to potential inspiration. There won't always be otherworldly sunsets, but when you really look, when you're consciously seeking something stand out, you notice that even the most mundane everyday things can spark an idea. I spoke about this in another video called Drawing Your Experiences, where I mentioned the brilliant urban sketcher Liz Steele, who paints her cup of coffee almost every day. It's a brilliant creative routine, a great practice in consistency and a really effective way to show progression over the course of a year or more. You don't necessarily have to paint the same thing every day, but having a go-to subject can stop you from stalling on those days where there's nothing much to write home about. In the same vein, and this might not suit everyone, but I love to collect anything I can that I can stick into my sketchbook to support the spread and spark more memories. I love the interactivity in a sketchbook of bits and bobs that you can flip and pull out of envelopes, and having something to stick in is often a great first step. Something to take away the glaring blankness of a white page and maybe build from into your drawings and writing. When it comes to writing, you really don't have to. I share most of my sketchbooks with you guys online, so writing personal thoughts and feelings in there isn't something I'm particularly comfortable with, but notes that will support your artwork, maybe a story from the day that you can't quite capture in a photo or drawing, are great ways to fill empty space and add an extra element of interest to a spread. Speaking of photos, I'm trying to take at least one every day next year. That kind of challenge forces you to really pay attention to each moment. Going back to the first tip of always being aware, always on the lookout for the beauty in everyday moments. I can just imagine flipping through this sketchbook in years to come and being able to relive those experiences in the most interactive way possible. The only other thing really is to decide how and in what book you want to do your journaling. It's all up to personal preference what media you tend to use, if you'll be doing more writing than drawing or more wet application. I think watercolour or mixed media paper sketchbooks are always a safe bet to hold up against whatever you throw at them. And that's it, no need to overthink it, just make memories and make art. It doesn't have to be perfect, just get it down on paper however the mood takes you and enjoy the process. Here's your directions if you're at home. 
I would like you to think about your favorite place to be in your home. Maybe it's a little corner where you can read or play with your phone. Maybe it's your bed. Maybe it's outside. Now, if you want to go outside, you need to ask an adult first to make sure they know where you are and that you're safe. And then if you'd like to take your sketchbook outside, you can. Now, I want you to find that spot, the place where you feel the most peaceful. And I want you to draw something. Now, don't freak out. I know looking at things in real life can be overwhelming because there's so many little tiny details. Slow down. Take it one step at a time. If I was going to draw the shelf behind me, I would see a line that goes up and a line that goes that way. Right under that line, I see a square. Do you guys see the square? If I was going to draw the papers, I'd do a bunch of little lines. Bam, 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 bam. I see a few more lines for these books. There's even a crazy curve over here where you can see the plant that's kind of dying in my classroom. <laughs> now, whatever you choose to draw, slow down. Look at one shape at a time. And it's not the end of the world if it doesn't turn out perfect because we're practicing. The whole purpose of a sketchbook is to practice and get those emotions out. I'm going to take you guys outside with me to do my example. And we have our views and trees. I think I'm going to sit out here and draw some geese. Notice when I'm drawing, I'm really looking at the shape first. And instead of getting overwhelmed by how complicated something is, I look at one thing at a time, like how the goose's neck is long and straight. Now, of course, I have a lot of practice like doing this. So mine might look a little bit more like a goose. But the reason is because I have a lot of practice. So while you guys are drawing whatever you're drawing today. I want you to remember that the first time you try something, it's not always perfect. It's actually probably not going to turn out the way you want it. And that's okay. Because the more you practice, the better you get. And you never know, if you really slow down and take your time, you might even end up with something that you like. The cool thing about this type of artwork is it's totally yours. You get to decide what you want to do. If you want it just to be pictures, it can just be pictures. If you want it to just be a black and white sketch, it can just be a black and white sketch. If you want to add color, you can. You can even go in and journal on top of it. So for example, I could go in here and say, my last lesson video recording of my 2020-21 school year. I am excited to share it with my students. talk about your thoughts, your feelings, it's totally up to you. Or don't. It's your sketchbook. It was so good getting to know you all this year and I hope you all have a wonderful summer. For my Lowell kiddos, I'll miss you. I hope you have a wonderful time in music next year 
and Reginald Chavez kiddos. I hope you have a wonderful summer and I'll see you soon.